Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! First this morning, let's turn to the developing situation in Syria where the news is not good. A nationwide cessation of hostilities is due to begin later this week, but despite that agreement, the prospects for peace are not good. The truce doesn't apply to the battle against what Russia calls terrorist targets and means that it will continue its heavy bombing campaign, perhaps even in Aleppo. Meanwhile, Turkey has shelled Kurdish positions in northern Syria, and the Turkish foreign minister says his country is pondering a ground invasion with Saudi forces. This morning, the foreign secretary said Russia had to begin complying with international law. The situation in Aleppo is extremely worrying. Uh, the Russians are using carpet bombing uh, tactics, mm. indiscriminate bombing of civilian areas held by oppositionists and yes we demand that the Russians comply with their obligations under international law and their obligations under UN Security Council resolutions that they have signed up to. Nick you get a, a feeling given this deal was signed in Munich that it's living up to the reputation of deals signed in Munich. Yes, and when you hear a British Foreign Secretary saying we demand that Russia does something when Russia is creating facts on the ground and we're not, uh, you think that that's going to have a pretty hollow ring about it. I mean, you know, Russia is now President Assad's air force mm -hmm. and what they've ensured is that President Assad uh, cannot lose this war but neither can he win this war because, yes, Russia has the air force but it doesn't really have any forces on the ground. And that very fact that President Assad now cannot lose this war has absolutely changed the dynamics of this. And we can whistle in the wind as much as we like, but Russia is the reality. It is the power there. Although, interestingly, Sir Roderick Lyne, uh, the former ambassador to Moscow, UK ambassador to Moscow, was on uh, the radio on Radio 5 this morning and saying, you know, we shouldn't get too carried away with quite how powerful Russia is. They don't have troops on the ground. They have a faltering economy and they are nervous about going in too far because, of course, the disaster of Afghanistan 35 years ago. Well, though that's not quite true. They do have some troops on the ground. They've got Spetsnaz and they've got proxy forces on the ground from Hezbollah and from the Iranian National Guard. And although it's true, I would suggest, Polly, that of course they can't take back the whole of Syria, they're going to take back enough of it big chunks of the border with Turkey, making success in the south, control of the Mediterranean coastline. And when they've done all that, then they might be serious about peace talks. But uh, then they're stuck with it. Uh, it's not at all clear what, I mean, I don't think Putin thinks beyond tomorrow. Uh, it's not at all clear what the long-term strategy would do, and it could well be like uh, the invasion, the Russian invasion of Afghanistan, an absolute disaster. And there you've got Assad saying, well, there's not going to be any peace. Well, we intend to take over the whole of the country, which is entirely unrealistic. There pl mm. plainly will be some sort of partition. What's happening there is very frightening in the sense that everybody's fighting a proxy war. The Iranians and the, and, and, and the, Saudi, and, and, and the Saudis... Um, the, re the one thing that people keep saying is Barack Obama was so weak, but it's quite unclear what he could have done. One thing he could have done was to give serious weapons to the more moderate Well, Hillary levels. Clinton wanted him to do that in July 2012, and she put a plan along with uh, uh, the, the, the general. Uh, to that and he turned it down. But what would have happened now is that they'd be shooting down Russian planes with American weapons. Would or Russia that, might not have got would involved. Would that make them possibly? We just don't know. Well, you don't Everything know. has a dynamic to it. This dynamic though is leaving uh, the West pretty much as onlookers. Uh, it's clear that at least in the short term Mr Putin uh, will get back enough ground for Assad uh, to then say look we've got rid of a lot of these terrorists in quotes because they're actually not Islamic State. It's now us versus Islamic State. What side are you on? Well, exactly. We sound like the mouse that squeaked this morning. And I think, you know, I slightly disagree with Polly. I think what you're seeing is a situation where one of the great powers in the world has got very involved in a situation and the other one hasn't. Um, Obama did have options. Um, he didn't even explore them to any sort of uh, extent that it put off the Russians. And Britain is left on the sidelines, you know, waiting for a new US president to, to get engaged in this issue and do something proactive about it. What could have been done that would have been any use at all, um, either useless or worse than well, useless, you, stuck us in there? At one end, you well, well, he did to say out, that the use of chemical weapons was an important red line. 
Yeah. And then he let them cross the red line. He totally and ignored what, it. He is, did nothing on the humanitarian thing. Well, what would you have thing. done that would have been well, useful? But, no, you could have set up a humanitarian safe haven and protected that with military force. You could have done some serious arming of the rebels to deter the Russians and to make it a situation where Assad could not continue. What we now have is a situation, as Nick says, where Assad is now a fact of life. He's not going anywhere. And, and but there's okay. not Russia's much you can do sorry, without I'm U.S. Back, with I'm that, uh, U.S. series of on, but I, I'm glad we touched on Syria because it's an important developing story. I've been getting away with it all.